phonation and the anatomy of the larynx. All right, so <clears throat> before we begin, there is going to be a lot of memorization required in terms of um, vocabulary terms and also looking at the pictures and like filling in the blanks. So like, for example, this picture and other pictures, I might have a blank here and you'll just have to fill in the blank as to what that um, part of the anatomy is. So let's begin with the photo here on the left. And I know that this is part of your reading, but I want to go over it specifically with you as you're reading or before you're reading, either way. So <clears throat> let's start with things that we do know. So of course, we're looking at a side view of the body. Um, and let's say we just kind of sliced it in half sagittally this way. And so we have our tongue, we have our teeth, we have our gums right here, or the bones that from the gums. The gums are here, and the, these are the lips right here. Cartilage from the cheeks and the chin. Great. Um, here is our epiglottis right here. So the epiglottis is the thing when you swallow. It's the thing that closes, goes down down like that so it'll go down so that nothing goes down your um, trachea to the lungs rather when you take that swallow it goes all the way down back here to the esophagus okay um, so vocal cords with no H, it is not a cord that you plug into your computer, but a cord, vocal cord with a C-O-R-D. That is uh, synonymous with vocal co sorry, vocal cords, vocal folds, um, the glottis. So we have lots of interchangeable terms with that. The larynx itself is the entire mechanism here. Of course, we just talked about the trachea, which leads down to the lungs and then esophagus is back here okay lovely of course we have our vertebrae here up here we'll have our brain um okay so let's talk about words that we don't know so the nasopharynx so the pharynx is just a place where things are and vibrate in terms of sympathetic resonance so nasopharynx the nasal cavity um, and, we, and our nasal cavities are really quite small, like tiny, tiny. They feel big to us when we sing up here in our head voice or our falsetto, but they're quite small. Um, so here's our nasopharynx, and that encompasses this entire area, actually, with the nose cavity. Our oral or oropharynx, that includes the tongue back here, all the way over here. And then the laryngo or the larynx, laryngopharynx is all this right here. Got it? Now let's go to our right hand side over here. Um, now we're looking at a top down. So, and we know that because this is the tongue and the tongue would keep continuing. These would be your teeth and then the sound would come out up here, okay? So here's your tongue tongue, your epiglottis, um, epiglottis, so it means that we have, we're still singing, we can see the vocal folds, right, we have not um, taken a swallow of our food or of our drink, um, below that are the vocal cords, notice the color of white, white vocal folds mean that they are healthy, if they're any other color, there's a problem, the trachea, which we can see, vocal cord and then trachea, there you go, right there. And then behind it is the esophagus. Okay. All right. <clears throat> and again, I encourage you to memorize where these are. All right. I won't read for you, but I still want to overview... Um, these terms, so of course, and these, these are asked in the homework, like what is the trachea, what is the larynx, 
cricoid cartilage, thyroid cartilage, cartilage, arytenoid cartilage, and epiglottis. So let's look at those. So these are the cartilages that actually make up the vocal folds. Let's try that again. There we go. Okay. Yeah, just making sure that we're on the right page. So, um, <clears throat> we're looking at the vocal cords, still at top down, yeah. Um, good, yes. So, the vocal cords come together, and they make this kind of action. They do not clap, they do not do this, right? The, the cords come together and they make this oscillation or this kind of movement there. Let's try that again. This oscillation or this movement, kind of like that. And in order to do that, <clears throat> well, they, so they have, um, let's see, am I getting, yeah, I'm getting ahead of myself. Okay, so um, the vocal folds or cords have two configurations. So we either have them relaxed or short, uh, uh -huh, when we sing low, lower pitches or stretched. Let's go over that. No. Yes. So two configurations. So let's say for um, low pitches, they are short and fat. Okay. High pitches are long and thin. So let's have a visualization. Rubber band is a great visualization for your students to see what's actually going on. So the vocal folds are short and fat in our low voice and then long and thin in the higher pitches, right? So, uh, uh, right? And we'll talk more about this when it, in terms of um, registers. I'm not gonna name any registers right now, but just know that the two configurations are either short and fat or long and thin. And of course we have things in between that, right? But those are the, those are the main two um, extremities, if you will. Okay, so here on the left-hand side, we have that they are short and fat. Over here, we have the cords stretched. And the way that we know that is because it says cords stretched, number one, but number two, Look at the thyroid cartilage, the thyroid cartilage, and the cricoid cartilage, okay? So right here, they are not stretched. They're just in their medial position. <clears throat> of course, we have our esophagus here. And then the thyroid, thy, excuse me, thyropharyngeus is right here, circling everything. Okay, um, and then the cords are being stretched because we have this stretching motion of the thyroid cartilage and also of the cricoid cartilage. <clears throat> and it says that the thyro, the thyro uh, pharyngeus is contracting. Good. I'm going to move on and let you hang out with that. Good, okay, so here is a side view of it, and I will zoom in for a bit here. I'm just gonna explain all these pictures. Um, so we are looking at the thyroid cartilage. So the, let's go back. The vocal folds are inserted into this kind of plate and these are stretched to the thyroid cartilage and the cricoid cartilage and everything is <clears throat> attached here at the thyroid thyropharyngeus okay and it's kind of all around so this part we're looking at a top-down version so this part actually goes down and inserts to the thyropharyngeus Great, now we can look at this. Okay, so now we're looking at a side um, version of this. 
this is the front and you know that <clears throat> because of the horn right here okay all right and this is the back so there's that rocking motion so in order to stretch the cords the if this is the front and this is the back it kind of goes oh Uh, front, back. Ah, and there's this rocking, stretching motion of the cords themselves. We have our cricoid cartilage, excuse me, our thyroid cartilage. I cannot speak, sorry. Um, I totally lied to you. This is the front. I don't know why I said that. <laughs> because that horn is actually the, the, um, the Adam's apple. So it gives you, we're looking at two versions of the cartilage here. The cords relaxed are, local cords relaxed are pointing to this um, solid, solid line. So it has already, right? And the cords tense are like when they're being used. So, ah, type thing. <coughs> All right. More old pictures, yay! So we just saw this, but um, hard palette. So of course, sanitize your hand first. Fill your hard palette. It is bone. If you keep going back there to the soft, car soft cartilage, that's your soft palette. Or your vellum and that vellum is that punching bag right there got it um, we have our pharyngeal wall so we talked about our na our, our oral pharynx so this is just the back of the throat the pharyngeal wall um, here is our tongue our epiglottis right so sound goes here epiglottis is here closes down like this so that we when we swallow food and um liquids that it does not go <clears throat> down to our lungs because we do not want liquid in your lungs thyroid cartilage and then crico cricoid cartilage great this is showing the difference between the open throat and closed throat open throat and closed throat so let's look at them both. Our throats are not really open or closed, right? But it's talking about <clears throat> uh, how open they are and how closed it is. It's not all the way open, it's not all the way closed, if that makes sense. When you say open throat, it is not like this, okay? We do not seem like this. So let's talk about. I want you to figure out, sorry, we're not going to talk about anything. I want you to figure out what are those, what does an open throat sound like? And what does a closed throat sound like? And what, which muscles are involved? And then lastly, how do you remedy either the way open throat or way closed throat? Great. Um, and it talks about that. What is involved in an open throat? <clears throat> we talked about this a little last class about the mandible or the lower jaw. Um, and TMJ, and how we can loosen up the jaw. Good. There's another um, look at that as well. And I think I have everything twice. I have everything twice. That's hilarious. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Good, but go back over those, um, go back over through those pictures, memorize, 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 flashcards, whatever you need to do. Lovely. Now we're going to talk about um, the, the onset. So, I know that when we talk about the beginning of the pitch, 
in terms of wind instruments, we talk about the uh, the attack, right? The attack is it a type attack or is it a do right? Or is it so? Is it a hard attack or a soft attack basically, right? Um, when it comes to the vocal world, we don't want to talk about attacks because that's we want to because of the actual terminology attack, which is a little aggressive. Um, because if I say to a singer, okay, now I want you to attack this note, then it's going to be like, ah, uh, right? And we don't want that harshness to the beginning of the note. Um, number one, for health reasons. And number two, because it's just unnecessary. The vocal folds don't need that type of <clears throat> to hang out with that, as your lips don't need um, that harsh of an attack every single pitch that you make. So let's go over vocal terminology okay so we say onset so the beginning of the pitch is the onset when the vocal folds uh, 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 come together that is called the onset okay um <clears throat> because the vocal folds are literally coming together and onsetting on each other okay lovely now Let's talk about the three different types of onsets. So of course you have, let's go with your terminology. So of course you say attack or onset. Um, and there are three types. So you might say hard, soft, and I guess medium or regular. Um, <clears throat> so a hard attack equates to um, a glottal onset. Now, at the beginning of the lecture, I said that I will interchange the word um, vocal folds, vocal cords, and glottis. Now, this is a glottal onset. So that's ah, 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 right? You hear the that beginning of the, the beginning of the pitch is what that sounds like. And we use that a lot in our language. So for example, um, come uh, uh, again, come again. We use it a lot in our language with words that begin with um, vowels. So the elephant, eh, elephant, the orange. Um, and we don't like to use this often because it's really just like, uh, uh, we're just like kind of slapping it together. Um, also, a reason why you don't want to cough a lot. Um, uh, 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 uh. So I'm gonna cough. Uh, uh, uh. I'm gonna add sound. Uh, 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 uh. Right? That's that hard onset that we do not want. Or rather, the glottal onset that we don't want. Um, let's go with the soft one. So we have one side which is glottal, one extreme. The other extreme is gonna be called the aspirate, aspirated onset, <clears throat> or aspirate onset, um, it's just with an H. Ha, ah, ha, ah, the apple, the uh, apple, the apples. We're just adding an H to everything. The ah, uh, uh, and then the ha, uh, uh, uh. So we're just delaying the onset with an H. <clears throat> now, the medium type of onset is called, um, I would call it, there's not really a word for it, so I call it balanced. Um, so like, instead of saying the uh, apple or the uh, apple, the uh, 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 apple, so, <clears throat> The coordination that's happening there, first of all, I'm not controlling it. With ah, 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 I'm doing that voluntarily. Of course, I'm controlling the H, ha, ha, right? But for the balanced onset, ha, ha. So the way to kind of train yourself is to start with that long H. So <clears throat> let's say the, the hall, okay? The ha, uh, ha. Uh. And I want you to... Do that a few times to where you write where do you feel the vocal folds to come together. So, 
it's like a long H and then feel those vocal folds come together. And only go as far as when the vocal folds come together. So memorize that feeling. Do it again with me. Good. Now let's try to recreate that feeling without the H. Uh, uh, uh. And you may even need to practice with doing a, a, a less less long of an H. So let's do a, a less long of an H. Uh, uh, uh. Of course, please don't um, have an audible H, so it's not right. Uh, uh, uh. Now let's do it without the H. Uh, Ah, ah. And in order to do, to do this, you must leave the musculature, you must leave the vocal folds alone so that you are not controlling anything. And so that's the balanced onset. So these are our three types of onsets. Um, we've talked about the configuration of the vocal folds. So, other terms to, terms to learn. So when the, during, uh, the, so we have with our two configurations of the vocal folds, which are short and fat and um, long and thin, we also have, which describe uh, the vocal folds during phonation or while you're singing, <coughs> the vocal folds can either be abducted or adducted. So they're abducted means that uh, the vocal folds are not coming together. Rather, let's change that there's a space between folds. Yes, let's try that. There's no space between folds. And let's explain that. <clears throat> so, the aspirated onset, vocal folds, the aspirated onset, <clears throat> there is space between folds. As soon as we start to phonate or make sound, uh, then they are adducted. Ab, space, ad, touching. Now, further, during phonation, so while I'm sustaining a note, uh, my folds are doing this. Uh, okay. So this is called the mucosal wave. And during the mucosal wave, we have ab, sorry, adduction and then abduction. Ad, ab, ad, ab. Does that make sense? Do this with your hands so there's a visualization of the mucosal wave. The mucosal wave is that is this shape the vocal folds make when we are sustaining a pitch or when we're actually making pitches. Ah, right? And then during this process, they'll shorten or lengthen. Ah, got it? Of course, they're going like really, really fast, <laughs> but I slowed it down for us. <clears throat> so, Phonatory exercises for vocal fold adducting while ensuring malleability. So making sure that the vocal folds are ab, sorry, adducting, coming together. Not so much, right? But just enough while ensuring malleability within the muscles, make sure that everything is relaxed. So we have lip trills, right? <laughs> So let's do <clears throat> as you sustain your lip trill, really go to your neck and hang out with relaxing everything. Good, let's do it again. Make sure that your rib cage is high when you inhale. Hear me um, as 
the the vowel that I'm um, lip trilling sounds like an uh. It is not. It is not e, but uh. Now I encourage you that <clears throat> when you open your mouth to the ah. Uh, so, of course, stay on the lip for a long time as an exercise. And then just open your mouth to an ah. And when you open your mouth to an ah, try not to change anything. And that's what your configuration for the vocal folds should be on that one pitch. So in choir, what we'd like to do is just like do maybe like a, um, a do, so, do. Right? And those are, that'll keep the that'll get not only the air going but also the mucosal wave going as well. You can always like add some kind of movement because you know as singers like movement. So like we did in class the other day. Another one for vocal fold adducting coming together is humming. Right. Lastly, two good consonants are Z and V because of the occlusion of the mouth. So let's spell occlusion. So let's talk about the anatomy again. If the vocal folds are here, it means that the sound literally goes up and out. I'll do that again. Vocal folds are here. The sound comes from here, literally. The sound goes up and out, which makes an upside down J or a candy cane, right? We're doing this the entire time. So <clears throat> with, a large uh, with a large mouth opening, comes that with a small mouth opening comes this, right? And so we want to sometimes have occluded or a small mouth opening or sorry, z or v <clears throat> because then our vocal folds will really feel that impact of the sound that we're making because the sound is going here, 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 here instead of just out. So we want to keep the vocal folds at where they are when we have occluded consonants, occluded vowels, closed mouth, z, v, u, e, not a, uh, not o, uh, right? This is not occluded, but closed, u, e, z, v. Those are really good vowels and the consonants to hang out with. So. The consonant z or z, all those things are really, really good for just starting the warm up with the choir after you do your stretching, right? Making sure that we're still malleable with our spine, your breathing exercises, and then going to occluded exercises for phonation. That's all I have for today. Let me know if you have any questions, and I'll see you in class.